Tonight, Ukraine is making a major advance on the battlefield. Ukrainian soldiers crossing the Dnipro River. Crossing the Dnipro River, moving closer to Crimea, which is occupied by Russia. This is according to a top Ukrainian official who says these soldiers have now, quote, gained a foothold across the river, which, if it's the case, is a significant first step towards Ukraine's aim of liberating Crimea. Russia hitting back, warning that, quote, a fiery hell will be thrown at Ukrainian soldiers. But pro-Kremlin military bloggers complain that Russian forces cannot oust the Ukrainians from their position. The development on the southern front line comes as Vladimir Putin is now pardoning and releasing convicted murderers. And if you look at some of the murders they convicted, it is horrific. And pardoning them because they'll fight in Ukraine. Fred Plaikin is out front. As Russia loses large amounts of soldiers on the front lines in Ukraine, the Kremlin continues filling the ranks with convicts, pardoning and releasing even the most dangerous ones if they survive their tour of combat. Sergei Khadji Kurbanov was sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2014 for organizing the high-profile killing of prominent journalist and Kremlin critic Anna Politkovskaya, who was gunned down in her apartment block in 2006. Now Khadji Kurbanov has been pardoned after fighting in Ukraine, his lawyer says. Politkovskaya's family and the paper she worked for, Novaya Gazeta, irate. It is a monstrous fact of injustice and arbitrariness, an insult to the memory of a person killed for their beliefs and for carrying out their professional duty, they wrote in a statement. There are others. Vladislav Kanyus was sentenced to 17 years in jail for brutally murdering his girlfriend and ordered to pay compensation to the victim's family, Russian media reports. He was also pardoned after fighting in Ukraine and doesn't even have to pay the compensation, the Kremlin defending the decision. There is a certain practice that is being implemented, Putin's spokesman says. To my knowledge, there are no exceptions to this practice. More precisely, there are exceptions, but they do not relate to the topic of the resonance of this or that case. The Wagner private military company first started using convicts on the battlefields in Ukraine last year. Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin traveling to Russian jails to recruit inmates. I spend more ammunition than was ever spent in Stalingrad, he said at the time. First sin is deserting. No one leave the front. No one surrenders. Even after Prigozhin was killed in a plane crash in August, Russia continues large-scale recruitment of prison inmates. Russian leader Vladimir Putin even included some in a moment of silence for fallen soldiers. We are all people. Everyone can make some mistakes. They once made them, but they gave their lives for their motherland and atoned for their guilt in full. And that amnesty also extends to killers in Russia who can prevent doing time by killing even more in Ukraine. And you know, Aaron, despite some public backlash even in Russia, when in some cases convicted murderers are released back into society, Vladimir Putin really doesn't seem to want to change course on this topic. In fact, his spokesman recently said that convicts, quote, atone with blood for crimes on the battlefield. Aaron?